Hi, everybody. So what we do at Cessna? Cessna is a local company. We are the biggest web portal. We have the biggest web portal in Czech Republic. And we have a lot of different services, something like 30 different services from email to to stuff like news. We are really like a media company. You can imagine something like check Yahoo or something like this. So uh, we have uh, 3D maps with a panoramatic view of streets. We have uh, our own internet TV with our own shows, stuff like this. Uh, but our most, our, maybe one of the largest projects uh, we run is the web, uh, web search, is a full text web search. And uh, what is really like unique about us is that uh, we are one of the few companies that, get, that can actually uh, compete with Google on the web search market in uh, Czech Republic, so we can locally, uh, we are one of the major players on the local web search market. And uh, with web search, there comes also the image search. So uh, this is what we will be talking today. Uh, image search, simply you put some text query, like uh, kittens, and uh, our system returns the images of kittens. So this is what we want to do with the image search. So uh, this, uh, this uh, our service has a like sort of long history. We launched it at uh, 2007, uh, but we used a uh, third-party provider for uh, search results, uh, the Swedish company Big Search, which provides the API for us to search and to display the results. And uh, long, for a long time it uh, was like this, and then uh, in uh, 2015 we told to ourselves, okay, we have a full-text web search, why not try to modify this technology and, and uh, uh, produce our own results for image search. So we made little like, simple modifications to our uh, web page search engine, uh, put it into productions, and we see that it's, it's uh, really like similar, similar solution, the similar results as a big search. But the results are not really good. It was not, not, not what we would like to have. So in 2017, uh, we pushed the neural networks into productions to improve the relevancy of, of the search. So let's look first uh, to, uh, to our basic text search, which uh, we launched in 2015. Like how does the text search work uh, uh, and uh, how does it compute the relevant images? So basically this, the, the architecture of the search has a lot of parts. First part is we want to, uh, to download the images from the internet. We want to find, it, find them on the web pages and download them. For this, we use a program called Crawler, which runs on, in our data centers. It looks at the web pages, it finds the link, downloads the images from the web page, and follows the links to find other web pages, and really crawls the internet and downloads uh, the documents, the internet web pages, to our storage. And in this part, we have a lot of interesting machine learning problems. For example, which links are important? Yeah, we cannot uh, download the whole internet as Google. We don't have so much resources, so we really need to cherry pick the, the correct links and to follow them to the most interesting pages. Then sometimes uh, the page changes. If it's a news page or uh, some reports, the content really changes. So we want to, to find which pages we need to revisit. When we download it, maybe after a few days we want to go there uh, again and uh, download the new content. And then we need to check like, if the change is really important. Maybe somebody just changed the spelling or just uh, some visit count increases. And we are not interested in this. So we are interested in really like the, the most important change semantically in the page. So after we download the document, we need to extract the images from the document. Yeah, so for example, this document has like three images on it, and for each image, we want to find the text that, are, that could be relevant to this image. So usually it's the closest text on the website that's near this image, but sometimes even the, the title of the chapter or of the paragraph is important to the image, such as an author or some, some kind of URL, file name, stuff like this. 
And so for this image, it could be this type of song. In this stage, we have images and we have some related text. And then we want to build index. We want to, to find uh, the words in this text. And for each word, we want to have a list of images that uh, has something to do with this word. And also, we want to store the, the, the text and the, the web page and uh, such metadata with the image to use it uh, later. Uh, here are also some of the machine learning problems. For example, uh, we need to remove advertisements, templates, so header, footer, menus. Then we need to extract the, the text which is close to image. Without uh, rendering the page, we want it to be fast. So to, to guess from the source code, like, which can be close. And then we need to extract the relevant keywords in order to index the image. The last part is when the user enters our, our uh, service, he's, he, he types some query, for example, football, it means soccer in Czech. Yeah. We expand, we find the synonyms, we translate this, uh, this uh, query to the English or other languages, and then we produce some expanded query. And then by using in the index, we find a lot of images for, uh, for the expanded query. It's like hundreds of thousand images, which could be possible answers to this, to this query. Then we add the metadata to these images, and with the query, we put it into Ranker which, which uh, decides which images are really relevant from this large number of images, which are the re relevant answers uh, to the query. And it produces all the images which we present to the user. And the user is, the, the first image it should be the most relevant image to this query, and so on. So the ranker, it's really the heart of the system. It's the biggest uh, machine learning component. And it's just a traditional feature engineering. So we have these three data sources, image file, metadata, and query. And we produce some feature vector, basically hundreds of features, uh, which then enters the decision forest model, which computes the relevance number of the image. The features are simple text features, because we are still in 2015. It's a basic text search. So we want to see how much words from a query are in the text that are near the image. Uh, we want to look at the image with the compression, if there is some information in the metadata of the image, such as uh, camera type, lens, GPS coordinates. And we want to look also on the source page, like what's the page rank, what's the spam level of the page, and stuff like this. But this is really the feature vector is computed from this stuff. So we can we build the system like this, and what's the results? How does the system work? Is it good, bad? So actually, for some really specific queries, it works quite. Uh, it, the results are quite good. So Pilsner Urquell, it's uh, one of the more famous uh, brands of beer in the Republic. Actually, the result is what you would expect. And for example, House Mouse. Yeah, the query about the animal, you get the animal, so yeah, why not? It's good. But if you, if you uh, search for some not so specific word combinations, such as mouse, then we get a lot of noise. It's like mouses, computer mouse, like why not? But some cake, some t-shirt, some toys. Yeah, they, not, not really what you expect as a result, a result for an image search. And then, uh, for example, funny is Oslo, which is capital of Norway. We see furniture, some uh, dishes, and a uh, donkey, because the word Ossel in Czech means donkey. So it's, it's really like, confused. the system is confused. And actually, one of the hardest words is the word Prague, because, you know, we just uh, crawl, uh, we try to crawl, uh, especially the Czech internet, and like all the companies, everybody has word Prague somewhere on their web page. So, so it's like the system is really confused. Like, what's the Prague? It's like everything is Prague, yeah? <laughs> so, it's, and so, how can we solve? How can we solve the problem? First, uh, first, the simple solution is let's look at the users. Okay, let's get some user feedback, 
And well, fortunately, we don't need to produce some questionnaires or forms for me and bother the users because our users use our web page and he scrolls, clicks, he reformulates the query. And we can, we can look at all this and calculate some signals, some features from this. So we can see how, ma how many times the user clicked on a specific image for a given query. Or we can aggregate it to the page, domain, for this query, the images from this domain are the popular. Or uh, we don't have to, we can aggregate through words, not queries. And also we can look at uh, something called not clicks, so how many times the user sees the image but does not click it. Or what's the ratio between clicks, not clicks, how many times the user scrolls the image out of the viewport, and stuff like this. Yeah, so we, we ran the system for a few months, and then when we come, came back, uh, we were interested in like, did the users click the <laughs> nice images on the top, or what, what happened? And actually, uh, this happens. So the, the results are a little bit better. We can see that it's also the, the, the pictures of the city Prague is there. Some pictures of the map, some subways, opera, stuff like this. So it's not really like perfect, but it's sort of more relevant. But then again, if you look at the competition, yeah, it's much better. So, so yeah, this is not enough. You need to push further. Uh, now comes the year 2017 <laughs> and we really want to, like people in the modern art gallery, we want to look at the image and understand what it mean, what's the meaning of the image. Yeah? So we build basically systems like system like this. The meaning is uh, encapsulated into something we called or into something that's called semantic vector which is really like a vector of 300 floats. And for a queries, we produce, we produce this vector by using sort of, let's say, word to back uh, kind of algorithm. Actually, we use a fast text library from Facebook to aggregate the, the vector from the, from, the, from the words of the query. So it's like a semantic meaning based on context of the word in the corpus text corpus and uh, for the image we want to map the image into the same space same semantic space that's uh, the uh, to the vector so if you visualize it yeah let's say here's the two dimensional space but let's imagine it has uh, 300 dimensions and each query is a point with 300 dimensions in this space then we want to map the images, like uh, the image of piano is close to the theory, uh, to the text piano, the image of fox is close to the fox, uh, the image of brown tractor is close to the word tractor, but also close to the word brown, and the uh, green tractor close to the tractor, but in the way, in the, uh, close to the green. And for example, this image could be close to lazy and green, for example. So stuff like this. We want to achieve this. And we achieve it by using a convolutional network. So this is uh, the network uh, has an image on the input, a lot of convolutional layers, and uh, the last layer is the is the vector which points the query space to the right point in the space. Uh, based on the image semantics or based on what's on the image. Fortunately, uh, uh, these images we can download already pre-trained uh, in order to understand the image pretty well. We use the, uh, the network ResNet published by Microsoft two years ago, maybe one year ago. And all this you can download already pre-trained and it works quite well. It produces a pretty large vector, so uh, the work that's left to done is to transform these image vectors from the pre-trained network, which is really informationally rich. It contains uh, semantic information about the image, but also some visual information, such as colors on the image and shapes, stuff like this. We need to take only the semantics, we don't care about the visuals so much, 
and we need to take the semantic features and transform the features into the space of the of the text of the text queries. For this, we trained on some pretty shallow uh, neural network. We call it a neural connector, which connects these two spaces together. And we actually train this connector on a uh, lot of sources of data. We have our own annotations. This image can be described by this queries, by this text. We have also user feedbacks, the clicked images uh, and uh, uh, the not clicked images, so we can connect these images to text also by the feedback data and there are some public data sets also which can be used usually in English so we need to translate it a little bit but yeah, it works in some way. So now when we connect these two spaces, semantic spaces, uh, we can produce <coughs> a lot of features from this. We can uh, calculate the similarity which is pretty obvious, it's the strongest feature we have, it's like four times stronger than other features. Then we can uh, put into the forest the vectors, so the forest know what is looking for, what is looking on. We can predict better porn or explicit content in order to filter it. Uh, we can better detect the, the text in the page for extracting the text in the pages that is corresponding to the image. And also we can produce new keywords for the images. For example, some images are in the photo galleries and there is no text around, so we can produce a lot of keywords for this. So what's the effect of these neural networks? How does the, the system improve? So for really like common words, not so specific, like piano, we see a lot of flash games, some notes, applications uh, in the old system. After adding a neural network, Really, just uh, just the pictures of piano. So, yeah, sorts of works. Then uh, we look at like the Oslo donkeys, old system, new system, just the city. So it looks nice for a mouse. After neural networks, uh, animal and computer mouse, which is really basically the two usages of the world. So. Maybe not so great, but it's more relevant. But some, some queries, for some reason, such as alphabet, in the old systems, it pretty much worked. In the new systems, for some reason, kittens, you know, animals. So we have a lot of work ahead, so it's not really finished yet. So, but if you look at the evolution of the system as a whole, Let's use the most difficult, one of the most difficult words, Prague. So results from a big search, not really great. Our basic search, similar, bad. After feedback, better. After the neural nets, sort of what we want. So now we can compare it to the Google and it's pretty much, why not? <laughs> What's in the future? So we have prepared some, we have some prototypes and uh, what we want to do is we want to look inside the image. And we, want, we don't want just a general vector for the image, we want to look inside and we want to detect the objects that are on the image and produce some descriptions like here, man is wearing glasses, he's holding, uh, he's holding a gun. So uh, we want to look inside the image because uh, the, the, the reason why people go to our image search is they want to see some landmarks, some celebrities and one of the uh, usage is they want to, for example, see the clothes or some, some items they want to shop and they can imagine like, okay, I would like to have a pink skirt but they can describe what kind of skirt they like so they just put the text pink skirt and then they browse the images and select like this is nice skirt, this is nice skirt, I don't like this one. So this kind of shopping is the usage of the, of the system. So we want to look at the images and know that this is the clothes, these are the cars for example and provide a similar, similar skirts to the user that he would like. So we built some prototype uh, which is 
based on many, many publications from universities, Facebook, Google, to Microsoft. And you can visit our booth and to try the prototype or we can talk about it, how, how does it work. And that's all. Thank you for this I would like to give credit to the team that works on on a, on a research lot of people from researchers to programmers, admins, product managers. So that's the guys. Thank you, Kash. Now questions.
Thank you for the talk. Uh, could you be somewhat uh, more specific about the neural network? Is this just a fully connected layer or something, something more fancy? Yeah, I think the best result, we tried a lot of different stuff. Linear transformation, deep network, and the, and the best result was like two layers with residual connections and visualizations and uh, uh, rectified linear unit activations. And does it answer the question? Yeah. Are there any other questions? Do you retrain the weights of the ResNet or just the last layers you added? Yeah, we, we retrain the, the we retrain the ResNet, but then we actually we choose to, to not use the fine tuned network because then we use the vector also for a bone classification and some other stuff. Uh, we, we use uh, we, we use it on a, also different services like uh, uh, car advertisement or real estate advertisement or. Uh, or a product search, so we have like service that's searching for products in e-shops, and uh, we wanted to have a like most general network for everything. So actually, we we uh, find, we use the for final network we use the non-fine tuned version of the ResNet in order to encapsulate all the global usage, and the results are really similar. So because the image search it's really like. A, Similar to the image net competition, we just want everything. So that's why I don't need to find it so much. One last question. Is there any? Hi, uh, as far as I know, Prague is not one of the classes in ImageNet, so how is it possible the neural nets helped you with the Prague query? Oh, yeah, it's a good question. I think maybe there's something like building or city in the categories. So, and this image, this this uh, that, that, uh, this vector, it's a, it's a really general. Like the classifier connects the Prague maybe from a lot of buildings, a lot of I don't know. Maybe people, light, I don't know. And we actually didn't explore like why it works. I say, it just <laughs> okay. yeah, I mean, we did some, did some analysis, but not, not like this, like why Prague works or why this, this query that works. So it's more like, you know, if you, you can't count the stats, it's like the best model, the best approach. And, yeah. Okay, thank you, Gosh. Okay.